Previously, you saw a typical workflow to do three and four point editing in Autodesk Smoke. Let's have a closer look at moving segments around the sequence and the settings that affect your editing operations. To the top right of the sequence, you will see four buttons of which three affect the way you move around the timeline. The first button is Select. This pull down menu also contains the tools for trimming, but if you just want to move clips around, then ensure you are in selection mode. This is much like the arrow tool in other editing software. So you can click the center of a segment and drag it around the tracks as you need to. You will see as you move the segment that you get a track indication as well as a timecode indication. The timecode value indicates which frame in the sequence will be the first frame of the segment when you release it. The SELECT tool performs an overwrite operation by default. The track indication tells you onto which track the segment will be dropped. If you lift the segment above all the tracks, the track indicator will tell you that it will need to add a new track if you release the segment at this point. You will also see how the indicators and cursor will inform you if you try edit video onto an audio track and vice versa. So currently, as the segment is moved up and down the timeline, it is free to move up and down the track. If you enable the snapping button, this will force the moving segment to snap to the existing cut points and the positioner. You can also turn snapping on and off dynamically. A typical situation is if the snap button is turned off and you have selected and started to move a segment. During this move, you realize that you want to snap the segment to a cut or the positioner. Hold down the shift key and snapping will become enabled as long as you keep the button pressed. This functionality will also work in reverse. If snap is turned on and you want to bypass the function, hold down the shift key. The final functionality we will look at in this video is the ripple function. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. If ripple is off, moving a segment over another will simply overwrite it. You can see that some of the cursor icons and indicators are displaying red. If ripple is on and you move one segment to another location in the sequence, when you release the segment, the back section of the sequence will shift forward to make room for the segment. This is indicated by a yellow color on the cursor icons and indicators. So up to date, you have only seen individual segments being moved around the timeline without any other synced elements. In the next video, you'll learn how to work with sync groups.